in the name of god the most merciful the most beneficent students i welcome you all and today's lecture that we are going to cover about under part 2 of cma strategic management the financial ratios and we will cover with some exercise and in this part of set 1 we will be covering mostly about the liquidity ratios and then we'll continue in the next sets of video lecture so what is ratio analysis i suggest that there can be a framework that students can adapt if they don't have one and like more kind of framework like meaning objective rules and explanation for answering any kind of questions that you can recall what you studied in this framework and present it like uh, in the meaning you can explain whether it is a definition or uh, uh, what kind of things what it is what it is not all these things you can put it and objective purposes usages advantages and even limitations you can put it there and rather i would say that in the rules you put all the formula or whatever the relevant information or even limitations you can put it there and uh, what needs to be taken care in this rules and explanation is that you have to orient your answer in light of the question and the story given attached to the question meaning if uh, in the financial statements or any uh relevant to data given in as part of the question you better take examples from there as interpretation interpreting them or giving your examples so that will be more attracting the examiner than give you a generic example but you can give that also there's no thing ratio analysis is not just comparing different numbers from balance sheet or from income statement or cash flow statement it is comparing the numbers against previous years or like intra firm comparison previous year past year and future projection and other companies information like inter firm comparison or the industry or even the economy in general for the purpose of financial analysis so what is the meaning of ratio analysis it compares line item data from a company's financial statements to reveal insights regarding liquidity solvency profitability operational efficiency and market value evolution of risk and return the objective is that evolution of risk and return that is the primary objective and it adds performance analysis with useful insights into a company paired with other metrics so ratio alone will not be enough for giving any interpretation you will have to compare with other metrics also taken from the financial statement or other notes in order to obtain a broader picture of its financial health the rules ratios are comparison across time or benchmarks of relationship between financial statement of accounts or between financial statement of accounts and non financial data like for example learning from the income statement net income and you take the number of shares so like this kind of things you can take it you explain based on the question what need to be explained for example if the question is talking about ratio analysis you can say that financial ratio or accounting ratios are mathematical expression of the relationship between two accounting figures these ratios are useful for the internal and external users of accounting information for the purpose of performance analysis and when we say it can be a past present and future and comparatively with other external data also analyzing strength and weakness of a firm and economic decision making are primary goal okay from where we take the information for the ratio calculation the sources of information for financial statement analysis itself are annual reports interim financial statements notes to accounts statement of cash flows business periodicals 
credit and investment advisory services etc so before as part of this lecture we are going to discuss more in detail about liquidity ratios with some exercise examples from the examination point of view let's understand the overall framework of ratio analysis types liquidity ratio solvency or leveraging ratios activity ratios profitability ratios and market ratios that will be studying in detail so in short in summary level the liquidity ratios are talking about the ability of the firm's cash resources to meet its short term cash obligations short term we calculate as one year or one operating cycle leverage or capital structure and solvency ratios the firm's ability to satisfy its long term debt and investment obligations by looking at the mix of its financing sources whether it is a, a debt financing or equity financing and all this what mix can be better activity ratios the firm's ability to manage its current assets that is accounts receivable inventory cash etc and current liabilities that is a uh, short term liabilities like accounts payable uh, notes payable etc all these things will be the current liabilities so how we are able to the management is able to managing it efficiently is the uh, idea of getting these ratios from these ratios profitability analysis measures the firm's profit in relation to total revenue or the amount of net income from each dollar of sales and it is return on invested assets return on investment market ratios and earning per share analysis or shareholders ratios which describe the firm's financial condition in terms of amounts per share of stock so this is more into the market so we will be seeing one by one in various lectures various video lectures but in this part of the lecture that we are covering about liquidity ratio short term solvency ratio so if you want to know about the all important ratios of the overall framework ratio analysis types under liquidity solvency activity profitability market ratios these are the things that you can just keep it in your memory okay now how financial ratios can be advantages to your to management this also i have taken a question from cma uh, examination uh, from the essay type of questions uh, where they are giving from 5 to 7 marks for this answer the answer also taken from uh, study material as recommended from institute of management accountants but what i would like to say by giving this answer a kind of uh, idea for the students of high level professional examinations that how to put your answer to such kind of questions what is important is that you have to understand kind of that framework that more kind of framework briefly you have to talk about the meaning that to inform the examiner that you understand the question very well the term involved in that is very well briefly one sentence or uh, about uh, the idea for example financial ratio so you just say um, what is financial ratio and what is the responsibility for the management and what is the connection between the management's responsibility into financial ratio and then go into detail taking some examples from the source of information given in as part of the question normally in essay type of questions what they do is some metrics that they will ask to calculate like ratios and all these things some statements they will give like balance sheet income statement and all this thing and then they will ask you to calculate the what is current ratio what is liquidity ratio kind of things and also they expect you to interpret and certain point each question they will give marks one mark two marks something and then one at least one or two uh, kind of essay type of questions like this like what is the how financial ratios can be advantages to manage so when we answer this you have to give such a way that you have to explain what is financial ratio briefly and then what are the advantages while giving that as part of exam examples you can also take from the question statement uh, from the financial statement from some some of your calculation you can give that uh, giving that result and giving interpretation 
and you can say explain how that it is advantages how the ratio financial ratios are advantages to the management decision making so that's how you have to satisfy the examiner to get the full mark so let's read the answer recommended so how financial ratios can be advantages to management so here we are saying measurement of economic events and transactions and the communication of financial information about them to interpret interested parties including management is one of the key responsibilities of management here they are linking the management's responsibility because the question is asking about management and then they go more into financial what are the financial ratios because they say financial ratios are a part of this communication the management communication process that includes analysis interpretation and evaluation of the financial statements and then go into detail the ratios display a relationship among various elements of financial data and are used to assist management in interpreting and explaining financial statements and ratios can be effective tools in evaluating a company's liquidity solvency operating activities profitability and market analysis at the hands of management for providing financial information enabling efficient decision making so they come to say objective is that management objective in efficient decision making and giving examples from the ratio analysis financial ratios are an important part of evaluating a company's past performance and also giving a future projection and are useful in strategic management so this is how they conclude the answer so let us recall some rules to follow for ratios calculation it seems simple supposing if we take only ratios to be calculated from balance sheet alone then okay it is like a kind of vertical total from uh, for one item against a group of item or total of item like current assets to current liability so there's a different group okay like that or some of the items to the total assets sometimes it can be with a different statement one is from the income statement and another is from the balance sheet in such a case you should remember that income statement is for the period it is during a period okay it is not moment in time but it is during the period period of time but whereas balance sheet is moment in time as on one particular day so it is fair that we have to take the average balance from the balance sheet in order to have the ratio complete from the when we take kind of income statement figure how do we take the average balances normally in the questions it's they are given if not given maybe opening balance and ending balance will be given so you add the two divide by two uh, add both and divide by two you not to get the average balance and you have to remember that in practical environment when when you are in, as a profession one may use different ratios and interpret them slightly differently that is okay but you are as a student you are studying giving answers to the one particular examination body you have to understand what is their expectation what kind of rules that they put forth as a sample so these are the things you have to take it and any time an income amount is for less than a one year period it should be annualized so you have to take it annualized for example if the figure is given for one quarter you have to annualize by multiplying it to four so like this kind of things okay the summary of liquidity ratios before we go into detail about each thing let's understand the overall things except the net working capital ratio for which the total asset is the denominator the bottom all the above items have the current liabilities as the denominator that's for sure you have to understand that thing. the current liabilities is the denominator so okay of all the ratios but only for the net working capital ratio the total assets is the denominator so we have cash flow ratio if you see this thing cash flow ratio covers the operating cash flow not from the balance sheet of from the cash flow statement all other things are covered from the balance sheet so that's the thing so if you talk about current ratio if you see it includes 
deem complete thing like cash cash equivalents marketable securities net accounts receivable plus inventory also and if you take about quick asset test ratio quick ratio or it can be called as asset test ratio you can take it cash cash equivalent marketable securities and net accounts receivable and cash ratio only cover cash on cash and cash equivalents that include marketable securities also ratios that are mostly used to evaluate a company's liquidity and level of its net working capital or liquidity ratios liquidity ratios it is the ability of the firm's cash resources to meet its short term cash obligations that's what you have to understand so to understand the meaning and objective and relevant information with some explanation for the liquidity ratios in general liquidity is the ability of an asset to be converted into cash without significant price concession what do you mean by price concession because supposing if you have some items you want to liquidate them cash okay you can take it immediately as granted cash equivalents okay marketable securities within some seconds you can get it from the trading activities demat account kind of thing you can get it but for example inventory or accounts receivable you have to run to the customer to get it it's not possible sometimes you may offer some price concession or some discounts to get that back cash if you give now okay i give you 10% or 5% discount so some price concession inventory also like that if you want to cash it immediately what you should do is you can reduce the price and get it so here what we mean is that liquidity here without such kind of price concession what are the things that we can take it so that is important okay liquidity ratio is a relative measure of the proximity of current assets and current liabilities to cash and is an indication of company's ability to meet its short term obligations okay because liquidity on short term solvency is the name so you can synonymously use it you can either call it liquidity ratios or short term solvency ratios liquidity can be understood simply as a firm's ability to pay its short term liabilities without any significant price concession or financial sacrifice so that is important without giving any discount that you can encash it or something what are the primary objective the liquidity is important to meet the current obligations at a time of abnormal situation to the business such as strike etc for example if your company is good at sales or inventory converting as cash or things like that okay normal but lockdown period strike period and all these things you will not be able to revenue generate revenue but you have to meet the obligations short term obligations you may need to pay to your suppliers and things like that your checks should not be bounced all liquidity ratios are within the working capital area so as we saw from the overall framework that is items of current assets and total current liability lack of liquidity can limit a company's financial liability okay making it unable to take advantage of discounts and other profitable opportunities for example if your supplier is calling you saying that if you want this raw material or you know things like that uh, we offer for cash discount something like that or any opportunities you cannot take it to buy liquidity problems also can lead to financial distress or bankruptcy okay that is important for instance the norm of current ratio is 2 is to 1 if your current liabilities is 1 million at least the current assets should be 2 million so that you have a better liquidity of that kind of things and a decrease would indicate a possible liquidity problem if there is a decrease in that ratio it may lead to a liquidity problems that we will see in detail while we are answering some questions also and when we go into detail about each ratio okay let's understand from current ratio it's part of the liquidity ratio current ratio is the most common measure of short term liquidity the main question this ratio addresses whether a firm has enough resources to meet its current obligations okay the current ratio what it does it measures the degree to which current assets cover current liabilities 
it is used to measure the short term liquidity that is what short term one year within one year or one operating cycle whereas net working capital is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities it is express that relationship but the current ratio express the relationship of current assets divided by current liability that's a equation for calculating the current ratio okay that is the relationship as a ratio so we are talking about current ratio which is current assets divided by current liabilities we all know but let us recall what are the items that could be in current assets and in current liabilities so current assets covers cash and cash equivalents including cash at bank and demand accounts etc checking accounts some countries they call it as checking accounts and marketable securities accounts receivables any accruals sundry debtors inventories loans and advances offered and all short term loans and advances other disposable investments and any other current assets all covered under current assets and current liabilities include creditors for goods and services short term loans that you need to pay bank overdraft cash credit outstanding expenses provision for taxation tax payable proposed dividend dividend declared but you have to pay that you cannot hold it for long unclaimed dividends that any time the shareholders can claim any other current liabilities these are the items that they are covering so let's calculate how do we we calculate the current ratio but how do we interpret the current ratio what are the use while interpreting companies with an aggressive financing policy willing to assume more risk will have lower current ratios the norm of the current ratio is 2 is to 1 generally a firm's current ratio should be proportional to its operating cycle this means that the shorter the operating cycle the lower the current ratio can be it should be lower it can be if the operating cycle is within shorter period so even current ratio can be lower this is because the operating cycle will generate new current assets more quickly than a company with a long operating cycle for example if your inventory is rotated within a period of month sold and then again new inventory so your cash flow is better compared to another company which is having 3 months the stock will be rotated every 3 months like that or accounts receivable is getting one month credit policy so within a month that accounts receivable are getting into cash so it's good compared to another company which is having 3 months 90 days credit policy so like these kind of things will help you to determine what could be the current ratio these points you have to remember while you interpret your answers to the questions well conservative financing policies result in a higher current ratio if you are conservative then you have to have more current assets than current liability so that the norm is 2 is to 1 okay two times of the current liability so conservative aggressive you can reduce the current assets so that is okay but you do not keep more cash flow cash equivalents or you can put it into fixed deposits to gain some financial revenue all these things you can think of that we will discuss it in while well, we address the questions also your lower ratio indicates your possible liquidity problem also okay if you are short of cash when time for in times of need that you may have a liquidity problems also next one is the quick ratio or it can be called asset debt ratio okay quick ratio is much more conservative measure of short term liquidity it is what that within the current assets where there is a more quicker cash possibilities are there only that part is covered against current liabilities so that is what the meaning of quick ratio it is more conservative than the current assets current uh, ratio the quick ratio or it can be called as asset debt ratio examines liquidity from a more immediate aspect than just the current ratio by eliminating inventory item and prepaid expenses from current assets 
why prepaid expenses are removed because prepaid expenses are already paid for an already an applica application of work to be done or something to be done which is already commitment so you cannot generate cash out of prepaid expenses you can just only uh, consider that the work is done then prepaid expenses is paid that's it set up but inventories okay you can convert it to cash but maybe with some concessions or you have to make a very aggressive sales force you have to have that kind of things now what are the ratio ratios calculation rules so quick ratio or asset test ratio can be calculated like cash plus marketable securities plus net accounts receivable you may notice that what is removed from the current assets are inventories and prepaid expenses so that is the thing divided by current liabilities or the same ratio might be expressed on cash plus cash equivalents plus net receivable plus short term securities bond all these things and current liabilities okay so the preferred ratio as it is quick ratio is 1 is to 1 at least 1% of the same amount of the current liabilities should be met by the quick ratio quick assets it is considered as satisfactory unless the majority of quick assets are in accounts receivable supposing the accounts receivable have uh, more in this quick assets okay and you have the pattern of collection period which is lags behind the schedule for paying current liabilities that you cannot maintain one is to one you have to have little more because you cannot get the accounts receivable into cash as quickly as possible so that is also you have to this actually the quick ratio results the question if all sales revenue all sales revenue disappear that means conversion of inventory by sales into cash disappear due to strike or some other reason could my business meet its current obligations with readily convertible quick funds or hand that's what it that is the main reason the inventories are removed from the numerator of this ratio calculation inventories uh, and uh, prepaid expenses so that is important thing to remember okay to so test your knowledge so far you have studied about the current ratio and quick ratio let's understand one simple question so that whether you are able to understand to answer one uh, question that was in cma examination also so information is given with part of the information from the balance sheet an enterprise has a current ratio of 1 is to 4 ratio is already calculated we know the rule and how to calculate it a quick ratio or asset test ratio is calculated as 1 is to 1.2 that is that means 1.2 times of the denominator which is current liability the quick asset is divided by current liability which is 1.2 divided by the current liability which is current liability is 1 take it as 1 so the power following partial summary balance sheet is given in thousands so cash is given already and the remaining accounts receivable inventory fixed assets all part of the total asset side and total assets are given thank god okay 100 and what is important is the total liability and equity is not given and the other side on the right hand side current liabilities is the only missing point in the details now we need to calculate the question is that the enterprise has an accounts receivable balance we need to calculate what is the accounts receivable balance given the two accounting ratio we can easily calculate this ratio i think students can guess easily and come back to the answers okay now let me explain one thing that this if you understand that the balance sheet it is balancing the total assets equal total liabilities plus equity so therefore this figures is completed now by the total assets is completed by the total equity and if we complete this we also get the last remaining point which is the current liabilities that is the balancing figure so now we got the denominator completed for both 
the current ratio as well as the quick ratio. But current ratio include all the current assets because the current assets we have three items to be filled, so which is a little complicated at this moment in time. But quick ratio is talking about ignoring already the fixed assets. Even current ratio is ignoring fixed assets, but inventory is included there. But quick ratio is including ignoring even the inventory. So the remaining accounts receivable alone is important. So if we are able to calculate the quick ratio, the numerator part, taking the, the denominator, which is current liability, is given already. So we get the 1.2 times of current liabilities is 36 thousands. So we take that things. So then we put that 36 to the quick assets. So cash alone is already given. So minus cash. So you get you get 26,000, which is the accounts receivable. This is how you can calculate quickly for this questions. Now, cash ratio. Cash ratio is taking into cash or cash equivalent alone to the denominator, which is the current liabilities. So, Cash equivalents are very liquid short term debt instruments with a maturity date of less than 90 days when they were acquired. That is very important. So, this cash or cash equivalents, when you calculate, even the uh, you should not take into consideration of all the current uh, instruments which can have a one year period. So, which can be converted within 90 days or less. That's the important point. But questions will be given with that indication also. It measures the absolute liquidity of the business. It is, in essence, another de derivation of the current ratio, but it is even more conservative than the quick ratio. Because in quick ratio, we take the current the accounts receivable also. But here we are e even removing that accounts receivable also from that. That's it. It measures simply the ratio between cash and current liabilities. However, in this measure of cash, we include cash equivalents, that means including cash at bank also, short term, because they can be taken immediately on demand, and short term securities, marketable securities. Cash ratio, therefore, the equation is cash plus marketable securities divided by current liabilities. Okay, or another formula, the cash and bank balances plus current investments, anything divided by current liabilities. Okay, uh, for example, in the notes, uh, body of study material given by Institute of Chartered Accountant of India, they are recommending this also, because in India they say bank balances, uh, but cash and cash equivalents can also improve that things, and marketable securities. The, the, you can assume that current investments are also the kind of marketable securities. Useful for the companies that have slow inventory turnover, slow collection receivables. So cash ratio need to be called taken care instead of quick ratio because the inventory, if it is a slow inventory turnover or a collection of accounts receivable is taking time. So you have to ignore both of them and come to cash ratio. Cash ratio too high may indicate that the company is not using its resources productively in its operation. Just for the sake of maintaining a good cash ratio, you cannot have, keep plenty of cash, unwanted cash for the business operations. So that is also important. Too low could be a problem in meeting current liabilities. So what you can do is revolving credit agreement or overdraft facility could help in balancing the effective utilization of resources. You can have order of facility, pledging your uh, some other assets so that get uh, uh, from the bank. So whenever you need a uh, cash immediately, you can take that things also. Maintain that way. Okay, networking capital ratio. So we know what is networking capital. That is current assets uh, less uh, current liabilities. The networking capital ratio compares net liquid assets, that is net working capital, to total capitalization, that, key, that means the total assets. 
total assets include current assets non current assets and other assets so the total assets are calculated so that is net working capital divided by total assets or you can say current assets minus current liabilities divided by total assets so that is the net working capital ratio it measures the firm's ability to meet its obligations and expand by maintaining sufficient working capital the ratio net working capital ratio is meaningful when compared with the same ratio in previous years okay what was the net working capital ratio previous year and this year like that consistent operating losses will cause net working capital to shrink relative to total assets if the business is not performing uh, inventories are not uh, generating revenue and all these things so your net working capital is going to be affected on that okay if working capital is negative this ratio will also be negative a negative net working capital ratio is a sign of serious problems including liquidity problems bankers look at because when you apply for loan or big borrowing and all these things bankers ask you a statement and they calculate they know how to calculate the net working capital also and the ratios also bankers look at net working capital why because over time to determine a company's ability to bigger financial crisis if the company experience some financial crisis or not okay they don't ask your current balance sheet alone they can ask past three years uh, balance sheet and things like that so they can see the trend and loans are often tied to minimum working capital requirements there will be some conditions in the loan agreement that they are checking their auditors banks people they will always check periodical statement of balance sheet where they will say that the working capital requirement should be maintained minimum working capital ratio should be maintained so that is also part of the condition and cash flow ratio the term flow itself okay that suggests that it is coming from cash flow statement okay and we take cash flow statement and cash flow ratio is coming taking the operating cash flow divided by the current liability okay the cash flow ratio measures how many times greater than the current liabilities the cash flow generated by operations is that is a important thing the ability to meet its debt obligations with the cash flow generated in the normal course of business your either your inventories are rotated or your accounts receivables are getting into cash and again and again and again so get the operating cash flow okay so that is the thing, cash flow and annualized cash flow ratio of four or higher is a standard for a healthy company four times a deteriorating cash flow ratio over time indicates impending liquidity problems if a company has a net operating cash flow this calculation would not be done because it is a company has a net operating cash outflow that what is mean by the cash inflow is not there but more cash outflow is there so that means it is negative and that will not be valid for this calculation for example if a company has positive working capital but it is not operating enough cash from operations to settle its obligations as they become due good okay working capital but still they don't have generate good cash so to to pay to meet its obligations okay due over the long term this will lead to solvency issues also because continuously if a firm is not able to pay their short term obligations so that shows some indication that they have some liquidity crisis therefore it is much better if the company is able to generate adequate cash flow from its operation so to settle its current liabilities because the reputation of the company is also is the concern of on these things okay now we will attend some questions all of them taken from examination only and examination questions 
and we will discuss it in detail and uh, before that let's present one uh, financial statement you know very well what it is it is a balance sheet and uh, of course depending on the questions uh, the examination point of view the questions will throw almost all the financial statements like a, a story and they will ask you some of the items and you should know from where you have to take that and calculate it and then comment or interpret the ratios taken from there so let's see that here it is given i have expected only in order to keep it simple in your screen but to show you that three years year 1 2 3 three years uh, balance sheet items focusing only on the current assets and current liabilities because our questions of liquidity ratios mainly about current assets and current liabilities but though in the examination it will be a full balance sheet okay including uh, non current assets and other thing income statement and so many cash flow statement and all these things but okay okay for example how do we calculate the net working capital it's simply the total current assets directed by less the uh, total current liabilities so we take these two figures we know very simple we calculate if we are into calculation of the ratio that is current assets divided by current liabilities we know how to calculate for the rest of the year also students can easily calculate that thing if the ratio is asked for the quick ratio so we know that for the quick ratio we need to take the cash and cash equivalents trading security accounts receivable what we are ignoring is the inventories and other items from the assets so these three totals so that divided by the same current liabilities you get that calculation these are all simple to calculate very easy but where the problem uh, i mean students to be careful is in understanding is that more into interpreting that what if the ratio is compared to the previous year and this year is increase or decrease and what does that mean all these things are important for answering to the professional uh, examination questions and here we are talking about cash ratio which is taking cash and cash equivalents this is demonstrating just how you take the figure and calculate it. okay and then let's go for an examination question GT Enterprise reported the following accounting information in thousands. So where they are giving accounts receivable four hundred thousand, inventory eight hundred thousand, accounts payable one hundred and sixty thousand, land value five hundred thousand, bonds payable due in ten years. Remember that because it means long term, and notes payable due in six months, and that is short term. And cash is two hundred thousand, prepaid expenses are eighty thousand, so interest payable due in three months. so that is 20000 so the gt enterprise has a normal operating cycle of 6 months so what is the question the question is what is gt enterprise quick ratio asset test ratio we know that what is the asset quick ratio the formula to calculate and accordingly it can be calculate this and that simply so for this what we need to do the denominator point is the current liability what are the things that we are going to take us current liabilities in this questions for example accounts receivable is the asset side accounts payable yes of course is the liability side and it is current liability and bonds payable due in 10 years time so we have to think about that whether it is a uh, liability okay but what is that meaning cash it's an asset side current assets inventory current assets land is a fixed asset this thing is an assets and notes payable okay due in 6 months it is a liability current liability prepaid expenses so all these thing we have to think about that okay let's analyze the question and find out the right answer for that okay now we take to calculate the quick assets we take the cash which is because the accounts receivable is part of the quick assets so we take that because in quick assets we are 
ignoring only the inventories so we take the 400000 and cash which is 200000 we take both so we take we get the denominator the numerator for this ratio calculation is 600 and the denominator which is current liabilities we take the accounts payable which is given 160000 and then the interest payable which is 20000 and notes payable which is 100000 why we don't take the bonds payable because it is given in the note due in 10 years which is longer than 1 year that means it's a non current liability item so we so we calculate now 600000 Divided by two hundred and eighty thousand, we got that ratio. Let's go to the next question. GT Enterprise is a manufacturer of industrial products that uses a calendar year for financial reporting purpose. Okay, these questions present several of GT Enterprise transactions during the year, during that financial year. Okay, calendar year, during that calendar year. Assume that total quick assets exceeded total current liabilities. They don't give the value. They say it is exceeded current liabilities. So the ratio is good. Both before and after each transactions described. Whatever transaction we are dealing, but it is exceeding already. Okay. Further assume that GT Enterprise has positive profits during the year. It's good profit, and the credit balance throughout the year in its retained earnings account. that means the retain earnings are also good standing equity value is good and uh, maybe not distributed and uh, even the profit generation is also good it's there now in this scenario the question is that gt enterprise payment of a trade accounts payable of dollar 64500 they want to pay okay they pay what it will do the four answers are given what will be the impact on that a If whether it will increase the current ratio, but the quick ratio would not be affected. It will increase the current ratio because by paying the accounts payable, we are reducing the current liability. That means the denominator is reduced, which means the ratio is increasing. But at the same time, we are reducing also from the current assets, which is the cash, may be reduced. So what is the idea? Is that if both side of the numerator and the denominator If the same value is deducted, normally the ratio will be increased. Okay, that is one common understanding. We should keep it and increase the quick ratio, but the current ratio would not be affected. So this is the second choice of the answer. Okay, so but no, both quick ratio and current ratio will be affected or not affected is. simply we can understand because the current ratio covers everything of including the accounts payable because it is part of the current liability okay and even quick ratio is affected because it is part of the current liability the denominator part so both a and b are not valid answer now whether it is c or d decrease both the current and quick assets ratio by decreasing the same amount from the numerator and denominator it will not decrease the ratio whereas it will increase both the current and quick ratio this is the right answer so we get that answer sorted okay now gt enterprise is a manufacturer of industrial products that uses a calendar year for financial reporting purposes same story but question is different okay it present gt enterprise transactions during the year assume that total quick assets and exceeds total current liabilities both same story income is good okay everything is there okay retained earnings are maintained so what is the question the question is about inventory value Absolute inventory of dollar one hundred and twenty-five thousand was written off by GT Enterprise during the year. 
so you have to remember before answering this question return off means it is not like you know selling or paying converting into cash it is just simply return off in the statement income statement and adjusting in the balance sheet of the inventory value that's how you have to keep it in mind but of course some values are changed because the inventory value after return off is changed is less now so that is reduced by 125000 dollar but whether it is affecting or not for the current ratio or quick ratio is the point that we have to keep it in mind with that note let's analyze that things so writing of absolute inventory reduced current assets because current assets the inventory is a part of the current assets but not quick assets because in the quick assets we eliminate the inventory so option d is the correct answer because decrease the current ratio only because it doesn't affect the quick ratio okay okay another question gt enterprise is a manufacturer of industries products that uses a calendar year blah blah and these questions present several gt enterprise transaction during the year same story everything is story is same and what is the question gt enterprise issuance of a serial bonds in exchange for an office building with the first installment of the bonds due late this year okay exchange in a building which is a fixed asset spot and the exchange that they get a uh, serial bonds issued and the first installment of the bonds due is later this year that means within the current operating year so that is due now whether it is decrease net working capital or decrease the current ratio or decrease the quick ratio or whether it affects all of the answers as indicated so we have to try to discuss if a b c or 2 then option d is the valid response okay that is the important thing whether it will decrease net working capital of course because because the bonds due late this year installment of the bonds due late this year affect the current liability portion and uh, so that is important so it will definitely affect the decrease the net working capital okay because you have to things you have to pay for these things okay and decrease the current ratio the current ratio is also taking care of the current assets and the current liabilities so whereas here it is reducing the bonds due late this year will affect only the current assets part because you have to pay them back so that will definitely decrease the ratio therefore okay and third is decrease the decreases the quick ratio yes of course because you need to pay in cash due it is part of the quick assets so this will also affect so therefore answer d is the answer okay the first installment is a current liability thus the amount of current liability increases with no corresponding increases in current assets the this effect is to decrease in working capital current ratio and the quick ratio okay next question the selected data pertain to gte company at december 31st of x year so they are giving quick assets the amount in dollar dollar 208000 dollar but they give ratio uh, quick ratio as it test ratio 2.6 to 1 and current ratio is 3.5 to 1 net sales for the year is 1.8 million dollar and cost of sales for the year is dollar 990000 average total assets for the year is dollar 1.2 million now what is important is that you have to calculate the current liabilities simply the current liabilities okay now though various data has been given it is like tricky but what is important you need to take only the relevant items for your current liabilities calculation okay how do you take it because you are given the current asset ratio that is a strong point which include current assets divided by current liabilities 
so if you are able to find out the current assets part taking into quick assets value is given and quick asset ratio is also given so you get the full part and you can automatically calculate the current liability by taking the quick assets value and asset test ratio you can get the denominator part which is a current liability so that's simple the rest of the part you can even ignore no need to consider that so taking quick assets value dollar 208000 divided by quick ratio 2.6 you get that current liability simple okay this is how the multiple choice questions in the professional examinations most of the questions will be like this kind of trick if you by if you know by heart the formula quickly and relate that formula with the given data you can easily uh, go to the answer very quickly uh, because you don't need to be confused of net sales for the year average total assets for the year and other things okay of course if it is an essay type of question where they give full data and there are various short questions maybe all will be required but here in a multiple choice question like that probably in the professional examination your multiple choice questions will have a various a different uh, weightage for the marks okay that is also important thing you have to remember okay which of the following is not a part of quick assets simple question so disposable investments receivables cash and cash equivalents prepaid expenses we all know by heart prepaid expenses is the right answer which is not part of the quick assets okay another story and question the statement of financial position for a firm as of september 30th of an account a year the current year are presented as follows cash accounts payable accounts receivable accru liabilities inventories total current liabilities and total current assets are given the good thing is that they have given the total current liabilities and total current assets remember that things now let's read the question further the board of directors of the firm met on october 4 remember this date is important of the current year september 30th is the statement released and within the next month okay they give because normally the uh, in the october the board of directors are meeting after the financial statement is released so they discuss and they declare the regular quarterly cash dividend amount amounting to 750000 dollar that means 60 dollar per share okay we know that the dividend is payable on october 12 only the same month same year assume that the only transaction to affect the firm doing during this october is only the dividend to be paid that's the thing the declared dividend declared to be paid no other transactions during the year and they close the books okay let's assume that thing so therefore the above given data of the balance sheet value are valid only if you adjust that dividend declaration from against the cash that is a thing like that so now question the firm's current ratio they are now you have to read the current ratio and how it is going to be affected and there are four options given whether it is the current ratio was decreased by the dividend declaration and increased by the dividend payment when the dividend is declared then the balance sheet is changed altered then the current ratio is uh what is the impact on that and or unchanged by either the dividend declaration or dividend payment which cannot be the true in uh, the option b cannot be true because it cannot say that we it is unchanged because there is definitely some uh, current assets are affected and current liabilities are also affected and decreased by the dividend declaration and unchanged by the dividend payment or increased by the dividend declaration and unchanged by the dividend payment so what is important is that we should analyze that okay let us quickly analyze that things balance sheet figures are same the only the board meeting decision is that about the dividend declaration so assume that the only transaction is this okay on these things so therefore the current ratio will be decreased by the dividend declaration because why it is decreased by the dividend declaration 
because the current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities so the dividend declaration is about the dividend payable and that is against that current assets current liabilities equation okay and increased by the dividend payment whenever the payment is made and because the dividend payment is made the liability is reduced so it will be from the it will be decreasing uh, increasing the uh, current ratio while at the declaration time decreasing the dividend declaration so the dividend declaration decrease return earnings okay why at the moment we declare that it is decreasing the retain earnings retain earnings are not part of the current liability and it is only part of the retain earning which is part of the equity therefore only the current liability is not affected okay but whereas when we actually pay it is the current assets okay it is the current assets are paid when we pay these things your liability is also reduced okay so there the ratio is both side the ratio is both side reduced so therefore actually the ratio is increase so that is why when the payment is made the current ratio is increasing so what is that important point why it is decreasing because it is affecting the equity portion taking from that and putting into the current liability so therefore the current liability figure is increasing uh, while the current asset part is this remaining the same therefore the ratio is decreasing the denominator is increasing numerator is same amount so it is decreasing so that is how the answer should be done now another question nsm company reported net income of 300000 for the year changes occurred in several balance sheet accounts as follows so equipment 25000 increase accumulated depreciation 40000 increase note payable 30000 increase these are the items that increase during that period okay so what are the changes equipment value is 25000 increase and accumulated depreciation is 40000 increase and note payable value is 30000 increase but we have the overall income is 300000 dollar for the year now these are all saying what is about the the cash flow generator so that is the important point you have to recall the cash flow things and additional information also given during the year that the equipment costing 25000 dollar with the accumulated depreciation of 12000 dollar for a gain of 5000 dollar so there was equipment was sold for a gain of 5000 dollar so there is a net cash incoming is gain of 5000 dollar so that is important and in december nsm purchased equipment costing 50000 dollar costing with that for 20000 dollar in cash we paid and 12% note payable of 30000 dollar was a, a liability is created for that okay and then we take that purchase of that equipment so when you purchase the equipment it become a fixed asset so that is also we have to note down so depreciation expenses for the year was $52,000 in the calculation of operating activities we start with the net income and because in order to see the cash flow statement when you study the cash flow statement for the total cash flow and what is the net cash flow coming in not cash outflow so we need to start from that what is the net income reported and from there what are the addition what are the subtraction and then finally find out 
what is the net cash flow so therefore what from this question what we need to take is the net income was 300000 dollar okay we take that net income of that 300000 dollar okay and then we should ignore the accumulated depreciation it is irrelevant we need depreciation expenses not accumulated depreciation okay so that is important so what is the depreciation expenses is given in the question is for the year was 52000 dollar so normally the net income is reported after deducting the depreciation so in the cash flow depreciation is immaterial so we have to add back that 52000 dollar to the net income which is 300000 dollar so we take both that and also calculate the 300000 dollar plus that 52000 dollar and in that the net income in that what we get the gain from 5000 was also part of this net income but this gain 5000 dollar is actually from the sale of goods it is not an operating income it is gain or loss item and it is a gain item okay so by selling the equipment which is not an operating part of the sales it is an equipment sale so that has to be deducted so that we get 340000 dollar so okay so 300000 is the net income and we take and we have to deduct that 5000 dollar from the net income because it is a non operating gain and then we have to add back that depreciation amount which is 52000 dollar therefore we get 340000 dollar as the net cash provided by operating activities okay okay another question the reported net income is 300000 for the year and changes occurred is the same detail several balance sheet so that is 25000 dollar and accumulated depreciation 40000 dollar and increase not payable is 30000 increase so during the year that's the same gain is come okay let's not repeat the same question here sorry okay okay what is the question is asking giving the same stories but adding little more details that annual statement of cash flow net cash used in investing activities okay what is the net cash used in investing activities but there it is operating activities here net cash used in investment investing activities is the question so what we should do is that the cash received from sale that the book value of the equipment is 25000 and accumulated depreciation is given that is 12000 dollar so that you get 13000 dollar from the book value and gain of 5000 dollar which is 18000 dollar that is coming from the investment activities that is point number 1 and as part of the purchasing because that is also on directing part of the investment so we get that 50000 worth of equipment paid by 20000 dollar in cash so the remaining 30000 was paid by not payable so we should ignore that so the cash is paid 20000 dollar and 18000 is generated uh, so that is to be directed so remaining is 12000 is the net cash used in investing operations the net cash is used in investing operation that is 2000 dollar thank you ella polum irivanike we'll meet again soon on my next lecture for continuing this topic or to the next one i will release videos for all the part of the ratio analysis one by one maybe in total about four or five video lectures because i want to keep it simple in order to save your tea time or uh, you know the small sleeping napping time 
so that I made it uh, small videos for each type of ratios into one video lecture. You can contact me through your course providers contact or to my WhatsApp number, which is 8675353989. My email address is nsmsh, that is my initial, at yahoo.com. Not Yahoo Zero, not yahoo.com only. And please use these contact numbers to share your views and questions relating to this topic or this course. You can also come through your course provider uh, so that they can reach me if they are in contact with me. After completing each chapter, we can give you a set of questions for your practice. Of course, in order to help you smiling at home. 